Hello beautiful wonderful people, hi how's it all going? Welcome back to the Animus episode 22 and we are back and we are here and we are ready to go. Um, we're going to do some little socials and then we're just going to jump right into the game. It's me, my name is... Uh, I, I also have a, I have like a fun thought experiment for, for everyone that I did tell them briefly before the game so I'm, I'm excited to do that. Um, hi everyone, how you all doing? My name is uh, Matthew Eberg, I'm Captain Crail on all things. I I GM this at this time. Oh gosh, when this releases, Dylan, will we have our thing happening? It will be after. Oh, this will be released after. Mm -hmm. Th there's. Oh, oh, our other thing. Our other thing. Our other thing. No. No. No, it will not be happening yet. Can we talk about it? We no, because we don't know when it's going to start yet. <laughs> Dang it. Forget so you, it. Hey, listen, go, fo go follow me on social media because you're going to find out what sexy, delicious little thing that is. <laughs> um, okay, the fun little thought experiment today is um, if... I forgot what the question specifically was, but it's if your character had like a... Uh, like a food named after them or like a certain brand of food, think Garfield Pizza... Um, what would it be? And I'm going to start this question. We're going to fall down like a little uh, Plinko machine on uh, Dylan. So Dylan's going to go first. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. Because uh, I know my answer. Um, okay. uh, I'm Dylan or Super Dylan everywhere on the internet. Uh, please use she, he, and they pronouns when you talk about me behind my back. Uh, <laughs> and if you are... <laughs> um, if you are into tabletop RPGs, you can buy my games or you can watch me perform in them. Either is fine and good. Uh, my answer to this question, Ike's food, uh, not for any sort of toxic diet culture reason, reasons, but those like keto snacks that are just cheese straight up fried in a pan until it becomes like bubbly oh, hard cheese. Delicious. And it's just like pure concentrated cheese with all the water boiled off. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm a hundred percent gonna. <laughs> okay, so so far we're off to such a cracking start that I will be making a feast that I will call the Adamus feast, and it will start with that because that sounds fucking delicious. Yeah. Um, isn't there like a, isn't there a brand of that that calls it Moon Rocks? Yes. yes. There's yeah. A, yeah Is there's there? A couple Moon of them. Moon yes. cheese. Yes. It's like it's all the rage in like the Cato diet because it is basically just a a protein and sodium snack with nothing else in it but that sounds fucking delicious tasty <laughs> yeah, yeah that sounds incredible <laughs> oh my days yeah. um beautiful wonderful and then we're gonna jump on over to non alika a little werewolf feels what is, hey introduce yourself what is your snack uh hi my name is nordine likadir my pronouns are he him and on occasion, just the tired guy. Uh, and I'm a TTRPG consultant, designer, writer, what have you, all over the interwebs, including on Twitter now. Because originally, this was going to say, I was banned, but turns out that's, that's true. That's yeah. right. That's we didn't fix that in that, in that time. <laughs> <laughs> we fixed it during the edit. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> my f The food, I think, is... Um, I think I actually kind of described it um, during... Mm like uh the food description portion of the atom list that i took over where it's just a, a fish filleted and deboned placed between two grills and just hung over an open flame oh that, oh that would be that would be like the signature dish in a zom restaurant or like a really like blackened sort of fish specifically oh i love it what would it be restaurant. served with like potato like potatoes like greens <laughs> uh probably on a like a bed of like a parsley salad. Oh my god. Oh, <laughs> gang. Parsley. Hey gang, we are oh, rocketing towards parsley. me actually making this. <laughs> That's like a fun <laughs> thing. <laughs> Everyone else has to kill it. I'm oh. so sorry, there's a lot of pressure. Uh blinkoing machine down. Beautiful one for Momo O'Brien. Hello, I'm Momo O'Brien. You can find me everywhere at Momo underscore O'Brien. I make content about immersive experiences. And my character, Sky, is just all four of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles shoved into one person because I lack originality. Uh, so her <laughs> food would be pizza. Hell yeah. It's very good. Question, 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 though. Yes. Would it be so <laughs> My first thought was Sky's too poor for stuffed crust, but I do love stuffed <laughs> crust. <laughs> stuffed crust is when I'm, like, having a really bad night and I see the option for it and I'm like... 
Okay. You know, and it's always worth it. Beautiful. <laughs> Moving on over. Andre. Hit me up. Hi. I'm what are we Andre. having? Evey. You can find me at Andre Vera Arts on Twitter and Instagram. I I'm I, I have recently remembered that Instagram is much nicer to me than Twitter, so I'm gonna try doing more shit there. Uh and uh, also at my website, andrevera.art, which has all my actual play shows, including a brand new one that's going to be <gasps> added to the list. That's uh, Streets of Gotham, which just aired yesterday as of recording. Uh, it's very good. It's very fun. I'm a supervillain. <laughs> it's good. You must tell me your food. It has to be something garlic related. Uh... I don't have to do anything. <laughs> um, okay. I know, like, the gauche answer is to, like, say, like, a salad bar. But um, I think it's actually, like, like a, like, it's more of, like, a variety of different, like, foods that are like intended for like feeding the animals but are for humans so like all right uh like instead of like chow biscuits like i mean you can eat chow biscuits yeah everything can be eaten yeah. by people uh no <laughs> Well, I mean, listen, everything can eat something. Is some this A lot of the times, it's show. not recommended here. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, I know that people do listen to the Atomless for health advisory warnings. Um, yeah, please don't. <laughs> please don't do that. I'm not going to lie. I was, I, I was listening to the Atomless while I was playing a video game the other day, and at one point, you were like, hey, everybody, don't lick batteries. It's really painful. Don't lick them. And the small part of my brain that birthed Sky was like, oh, no, I want to, no, I want to lick a battery. <laughs> <laughs> this one good. Can I ask a follow-up question to the delicious salad feast? Is there like a signature dressing? Oh, that's a good question. That is a good question. Hmm? What? Uh, <laughs> A, a signature dressing? A, dr a dressing for the salad feast? What? Comma, is there I, one? For, for... <laughs> What's the For question? the theriac? Yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. It's not even salad form. It's just like, it's, it's in little enrichment boxes and shit. Like, oh, it, is, it, is, it is not like... You don't get to choose. You're given it. <laughs> it's... <laughs> It's it's rations. It's 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 <laughs> it's it, it is the, it is hey. both a ration and a toy. <laughs> hey gang, I already said that I will make this, and it's too late to back out now. I will still make this food. Okay, um, that's like the world's shittiest happy meal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what, does the box fold into something fun? Um, like a pamphlet. A pamphlet. Well, like uh, enrichment. Uh, Enrichment. Norton has uh, a point. Could yeah. be an enrichment tool. That is a very different kind of enrichment than what I was imagining. Ooh, what kind of enrichment were you? Not, doing? not educational enrichment. Just, you know, like a ball <laughs> Just... or something. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got kind of worried for a second there. I'm like, wait, what? What, what, what other enrichment nice. is there? <laughs> Perfect. Wonderful. Theriac's food is a bunch of seeds in a ball that you bat around in your enrichment yeah, closure. To, to get the seeds out, you have, we have to play catch for half an hour. Yeah. And then we get to have the seeds. Yes, correct. Perfect. Right. I can't wait to go to this dinner party in real life. Yeah. Wally. We all have to wear like pure white jumpsuits. <laughs> Wally, oh bring God. us home. What is the final dish on this delicious, delicious feast? Stop, y'all. It's me, Wally, your favorite non-binary slime best friend on the internet. You can find me on the Twitters at W-A-L-L-E 132, like the cute little Disney robot where I'm talking about my hyperfixations. Uh, boy, what would Poncho's signature dinner be? I had a, time with, a lot of time thinking about this. I bounced this around in my head a bunch of times, but I realized Poncho would have a straight-up, like, traditional 
barbecue kind of situation mm. where it is you have a quarter pound of pulled pork, a quarter pound of brisket, a big old bowl of baked beans, a gigantic thick cube of, of cornbread, and um, the a, a drink of your choice, be it soda pop or some um, alcoholic beverage you may like. Also, if you ask kindly, uh, if you request for it, you can get a steak. But if you ask for a medium well, he would look at you dead in the eye and politely ask you to leave. <laughs> wow. So Poncho's Beautiful. carrying this dinner party. <laughs> With a main. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Incredible. FUX gang. Um, oh, much just small little thing. Hey, we're going to get on to the episode now. But we also have a Patreon now, which is the first time oh, we've yeah. officially said this with our words in mouth. Um, yes. Uh, but thanks so much for joining us. We're going to get into the game. We have a Patreon where it's it's a, a little place where we update you on all of the delicious uh, uh, delicious little little clips before they go out to anyone else. Talk about, like, you get little hints, little editing process. Um as well as a bunch of little bonus stuff, and it's it's grand. And and uh, oh, you also get a little sticker, right? You get a little prize. That's correct, Dylan. Do you? Do you yeah, not everybody, but certain tiers have little stickers uh, by Andre Rivera dot art uh, of our characters or of the Wild Times logo. Uh, more things to come possibly down the line, but that's what you can get right now. Um, you can get early access to episodes, early access to little clippies, uh, sneak peeks of upcoming little goodies. Um, and you can also, uh, at the highest tier, you can get a little shout out at the end of the podcast episodes, mm. um, by whoever is, uh, doing the podcasting duties, uh, on that, on that particular episode. And, um... And that is, uh, that's everything. Also, Perfect. you just be doing yeah. us a real and it supports flavor. us. It supports us real well. Yeah. It's it's fucking perfect. Thank you, gang. Yeah. Um, perfect. And with that, which you beautiful, wonderful gamers like to fly through space slash have a fun Wild West adventure. Yes. Beautiful, it's wonderful. Woo! Previously on The Adamless. Azan, he. Ike. She. Uh, my name is Theoriac. What's up? My name's Sky. Welcome to the patchwork, my dudes. You have a lead on where the next crystal is. The planet Nos in the Vanir system. The patchwork unable to slow. The, the patchwork almost completely destroyed, bursting into splinters as you all fall onto a in, into a seemingly infinite dust-ridden desert. My name is Poncho. Uh, I'm the sheriff of these areas. I'm the sheriff of Neutrino Downs. Uh, I saw your crash. I saw your beacon, so I rode out here to help you out. As you all cheers, there is a boof from outside, a loud bang, and then <coughs> another. I'm out the door. Sheriff! Poncho, you took you took from the Baron. We... we can't be having that. Baron is that angry about whatever I took from him. Um, just let him know he's not going to get it back. And let him know that what he wants, he's never going to get. No matter how many of you boys that he hires. The sun's setting on your ride here, Sheriff. Well, I like to think I got a couple more hours left of dustfall. We're going to be coming back in a week. The rising sun reflects off of an android staring out into the crumbling sands of Nos. They wear tactical gear, a sniper slung over their shoulder. They call into the inn of Neutrino Downs. There is none of them on the horizon yet. Perhaps they thought better of the attack. A human sits, resting their blaster rifle between their legs, tying their hair into a bun. BK, you know that's not the case. Alistair, you humans have a tendency to back out of promises. 
Maybe the Baron had thought better of his plan. Or perhaps that is wishful thinking on my part. I didn't know you could think! Another human, cropped black hair, a homemade rifle in her hands, walks in dressed as a classic cowboy. That must be hard for you. Alistair and BK907 laugh. Like, Sammy, you look ridiculous. I'm just looking the part. We're having a showdown after all. She's also been doing the cowboy voice for the past hour. Behind Sammy walks a vesk. Pink and purple scales cover the top of their head and frill out, covering their head in a mane of spines. She refuses to let it go. The townspeople were all very confused. Artemis is currently down there apologizing. Like, it was fun. They enjoy my whimsy. Uh, where, where is Pancho? I thought he'd be up here. I believe he was talking to the bartender. They have become quite enamored with one another. Well, they may as well get their flirting in now. I want to get this shipment to New Moors. We're leaving this dust bowl in the morning. As this small party of friends who were once complete strangers chat, Poncho. You wander in and see your party. Zegrius is checking their laser axes, the large vesk, and posing with Sammy as they both check themselves out in the mirror. Alistair sits, tries to focus on his breathing and counts ammo for the fifth time. And BK907 keeps their watch, the sun reflecting off their metal as they look out into the crumbling sands. Now I heard, uh... Word of y'all talking about me as I come up, as I came walking up here. Now, for any of your business, what I do with the bartender is my business alone. However, yes, I am quite sweet on her. <laughs> I knew it. I knew that's that. I knew that you were. You two make a, quite a handsome couple. Thank you very much. And, and Sammy, your outfit looks just fine. It looks great, and the accent. You can hear me with the, I'm pulling it back. I'm, I'm, I'm a real genuine cowboy. Indeed, you are a genuine cowboy. <laughs> Thank you. All right, everyone. We know what we need to do. Sun's about to rise up. Y'all ready? Yes, I think we are all prepared. Yeah, um, we should, should have enough for, enough ammo for a, a short shootout if it comes to that. BK, right. oh, go on. I'll give y'all the same thing I told y'all previous days. It's your last chance to back out. I'm not holding all y'all to this, but if you want to turn back now, Here's the chance. As I was just telling Alistair, organic beings are ones to back out. They turn their head to you, smile warmly. I am made of sterner stuff, and then <laughs> there's a shot that rings out far in the distance. BK907's head jerks to the side as machine parts litter the room. They fall down, head half missing. The next few hours are cruelly, awfully impossible to forget, even though at the time they were just pure adrenaline blur as the Baron's men rolled in and took arms against Neutrino Downs. Poncho, you wake with a start in your cabin. It's night. The 
sounds of the gusting wind rattles through a slight crack in your open window. You have a team again. Somewhat. You've only just met, but the threat of the Baron's men coming back has brought back these memories that you've skillfully managed to avoid. What is it you'd like to do? Pancho sits up in bed, looks a little bit shell-shocked as he's trying to forget that nightmare. And he hops out of bed, and he does his usual things that he does in the mornings. He starts up a pot of coffee, hop, hop, hops outside, pours water into Thistlebrush's trough so they can drink up, and then uh, pulls out a bucket and dumps like a big old mess. Looks kind of like, you know, like chum that you feed to sharks mm. and puts that in another trough for Thistlebrush to chow down on that. And um, then they pour themselves the pot of coffee after it's done and then sits down on that front porch in the rocking chair that's facing out towards the vast desert area. And just they take a long sip of coffee and then they sigh a bit. They really do remind me of the old team. You hear take another sip. A a a a excited and appreciative um lapping up of the of the food as you as you as you speak out loud. Um Thistlebrush almost responds with a... Now, Thistlebrush, you shouldn't get too connected. To, you couldn't get too connected with them. They're only doing their business here, and then they're going to be moving on. You can't be making friends with them. You know, I know, I know you, you... I know you have a bit of a separation anxiety every now and then, understandable, but you got to understand, these people are just coming by this plan to help out. <laughs> And then get back to eating almost with a huff. Now don't, now don't, now don't get mouthy. <laughs> we told you, you got to work on your swears, all right? Uh, after about an hour or so, as as the sun properly begins to rise, you hear very, very, very faintly on the wind a. Almost the sound of a motor. A sputtering, crude, loud, struggling motor. Looking out, you see this big hunk of scrap. A tarp lazily thrown over it. This skeleton of a ship, just these huge, huge metal girders bent into almost a, a wagon connected to these two shoddily made tracks made of different sh random shards of metal and like broken pieces of wood, old scrap. On this mechanized wagon, this shoddily made tank a one-armed yoski rat sits next to a a teenager looks around sky's age nursing a uh, a wound on their leg and they're chatting happily still quite far away but you can see them both chatting um, Pancho hops up, grabs his hat, puts it on, and uh, he pat pats Thistlebrush as he makes their way out towards um, them to kind of like intercept them. Hmm. 
hushed conversation not because they're trying to hide anything just because they um there's the the wind is 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 quieting the conversation for them there's a yeah but like you know how do you know like how to how did it like when was the like oh yeah that makes sense for me um you know that feeling was that just like an always thing like i don't know it was just kind of a it just kind of i just kind of realized it one day and then it all kind of oh uh the teenager nudges uh the rat and the rat uh let's go the uh, of the wheel and 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 waves at you uh you recognize uh, these two from the crash of the patchwork uh far away i'm not sure if you call their names but um you recognize both of them as they as they have clearly like tracked you or just kind of set off in a direction just followed that straight line um hey there how's it going uh hey there uh i recall uh seeing y'all with the rest of the crew as they came in uh yeah that what's, that's what's left of your ship <laughs> uh yep uh it's about it um a lot of it we just left there's some good there's some there's a good haul we have like a uh there was like a a, a like a galaxy tracker and we have some turrets uh that kind of survived but you know with what we decided to make here we wanted to just take the bare bones and the bare bones is as as he like looks up you can see it is literally just a it's just support there's almost like there was almost no point in bringing uh in bringing anything um they just hauled this almost just one singular room with these huge girders and then draped a tarp over it, maybe to block from the sun, which is probably a smart idea. Um, but ultimately, they really have nothing with them. Uh, this. Uh, is this your town? I wouldn't call it my town. More of I'm just the protector of this town. Uh, I don't know if I was form we formally introduced ourselves. My name is Sheriff Poncho. I am the sheriff of Neutrino Downs. <laughs> That's fun. I can't believe we're, um, uh, we we were able to trust a sheriff. Uh, yeah, my name my name's Scrap. It's nice to meet you. This is Flair. Keelan is a large wolf guy. He's in the back. He's just having a snooze at the minute. Um, thank you so much, honestly, for for um, coming out to search for us. That that really means that really means uh, the world. You genuinely saved us. I, I appreciate that. Well, I wouldn't be much of a sheriff if I did not help out those in need. <laughs> yeah, uh, you'd be surprised. So, um, yeah, is there like a room we're staying in? I don't suppose we're going to be staying for very long, uh, you know, just until we kind of figure out a plan. Well, uh, the rest of your friends are currently in the town. They've all found some residence at the inn. Uh, they've got themselves quite comfortable over there. If you want to make yourself make your way over there, uh, you can park your that outside of the town and uh you can make your way in and stay at the inn and reconvene with your crew just uh make sure you park that outside of the town our town's small there isn't much room for all that to leave in the center of it oh yes sheriff absolutely yeah we'll 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 park it up um uh we'll park it up here we can walk um they as as scrap says it and says it very casually like oh yeah this is fine um you did notice coming up that they were struggling to get up like a small mound um and they're playing this off as like hey this is a perfect place to park this is what i meant rather than i actually can't get over this hill and i'm too embarrassed to stay they Pancho Pancho looks at that and then uh he goes now, I wouldn't also be much of a sheriff if I did not provide some assistance in helping y'all get to the town. Though, I'm certain if on your own, you could get there on your own. But uh, once again, I'm just offering my assistance. I mean, 
hey, the we we can't manage to if 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 this ship doesn't fit, if you're offering, I mean, we don't really need it, but we'll definitely take any help that we can get. Absolutely. Yeah. What are you? What are you? What are you? What are you thinking? Well, looks like to me here we have a situation where you have the pretty much the bare bones of your ship has been broken apart, and you need to get over this hill. What we can do is we can hook you up some uh, travel lizards and get you over this mound and pull you down down the rest of this hill. Going to have to pretty much uh, make sure that it doesn't get away with you. Then it slides down because if it slides down that hill, well, it'll start rolling, and well, you won't have much of a ship left after that. Have you ever uh, dealt with a rolling ship, son, going down a hill? Ah, uh, just making a lot of assumptions here. Ah, uh, but I mean, hey, listen, you know best, I guess. Yeah, sure. I mean, we could, you can, you can, we can figure something out. Sure. Okay, I appreciate it. Uh, the teenager steps in. It's like, yeah, uh, that would that would be great. Yeah, thank you. We have been struggling with this. Uh hillock for a little bit I, I appreciate that thank you no 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 we're fine we're fine we're fine but yeah if you want to help you can help that's fine i'll head over to town and see if i can rustle up some folk that can help you pull it the rest of the way <laughs> thank you uh yeah thank you i didn't need that flat i think i th i think we need it it's it's fine um as you as you hop on into town um yeah, you you hop on into town. Uh, Scrap and Flare stay with the uh, stay with the the patchwork wagon, as it is now. Um, as you hop on in, yeah, there's opportunity for anyone else to 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 jump in, being awake if they want to be. Does anyone want to go first? Does that mean Momo can go first? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Sky, off screen, has had a makeover. Her hair is dyed, a strawberry blonde type color. She's got a very good hat, a very good blouse, chaps, and a good pair of boots. She's gonna stroll into the middle of the town and say, howdy, partner. You ready to make hay while the shun sun shines? <laughs> I... I definitely don't have a, a a list of cowboy phrases written on my hand. Uh, Pancho stares at Sky for a bit, and he looks at her for a while. And at first, is a look of like, "Who is this? Who 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 lost this impetuous child?" But then it kind of <laughs> melts into. A, a look of nostalgia and you kind of maybe for a brief moment you see kind of like a a sad smile on his face as he's thinking about Sammy did I did I get the wrong boots or no something? no 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 your, your boots are fine your boots are fine uh, oh, he boots are fine. reaches into his back pocket and he pulls out a handkerchief um and he hands it to sky you need to finish the outfit wait with a handkerchief yeah you put the put it you got to put it around your neck Not and enough. then when it gets really dusty you put it up over your face it's, it helps you protect yourself against the sand and the wind in the desert oh okay thanks oh i forgot one bit of the outfit and out of my pocket i take a bandit mask all right, now that is counterproductive to what exactly you're trying to display here. You're trying to display what yourself. What I'm trying as to display is I look cool. It's at that point, Poncho laughs. It's an actual, real laugh of like, of amusement. He's like, you know what? You're absolutely right. You do look real cool. I'm ready for rooting. I'm ready for tooting. Let's get our gang together. Well, we're not doing much farming here, so there's not a lot of rooting that'll be going down. And uh, oh, is that what that you, means? If, well, yes, yeah, so you you root up vegetables, and well, if you have uh, some intestinal problems that you're going to be tooting a lot of, we could send you over to the dock. It can give you something for your stomach. Yippee ki yay! Oh. 
uh, before, uh, Let's before get I a move on. Uh, you have a couple of friends, uh, a, a, a young, a young man and, uh, and a fellow with a one arm, with a robot oh. arm. Oh, Stellar, are they okay? Uh, yeah, they, they look quite fine. Um, just, uh, they look like they were, they were kind of, uh, having a bit of a bickering session on what exactly to do to get the rest of their, your ship over a hill. So I figured I'd come into town and see if I can get a, uh, get a little, uh, group together to help you get the your wagon over, over the hill and back into town. Scrap, are you trying to whistle? Hey! That was Flair. Flair is in the background oh. trying to whistle. You can see him like sticking his fingers in his mouth and trying to blow. And then Flair, are you like, trying to whistle? Hey! No! Yeah, it's dry. That went on like a really long time. I got it. I used to be able to do it. I've done it like a couple times. It's great. I'm gonna, I'm gonna oh, make my I way to work. I believe you. Uh... Flair says a word to Scrap. Scrap like turns around like bright eyed and very excited. Um, he, you can see like in in the distance his his fur like bristles a little bit. Um, and it's Aah! and then Howdy! Uh, makes his way Scrap, over. I'm the deputy. Scrap, Scrap, I'm the Scrap, I'm the deputy. As he talks weird. You fucking deputy? No way! Holy shit! Like a fucking uh, who gave you that power? It's my boss. <gasps> Oh, we got a sheriff and a deputy. Oh my god, are we gonna be doing deputizing? Are you staying here now? Do I we don't need know. you? To... I don't know. It's, what it's, 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 only, it's only temporary. Um, that I've deputized uh, Sky here. They have they have performed the fact that they have the gumption and know how to help protect this uh, town. So I have deputized them and the other members of the crew. Uh, do we do we need to protect this town? Is something happening to this town? Oh, I gotta fill you, t tell you what, Sheriff, why don't you go get the gang? I'll fill in the rest of them, and we'll meet back at the, what's left of the patchwork. I'll go uh, head to the end. That's probably where they're all at. Uh, why don't y'all help your friends get over this hill? And he'll hop, hop, hop to the end. Uh, as you hop, 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 you hear a, like a, what the fuck are we doing protecting the town? Are we staying here long? And then as that, like, slowly fades out as you enter the uh enter the inn is anyone else up and awake what's the rest of our of the patchwork crew doing so so i think my thought for i was that she was sort of spending the night trying to like have Verpal discover what bits of electricity are like around this is a new planet not sure what the like status of technology like is if it's going to be the same or if it's going to be something different so having like Verpal case uh, kind of case like the, the town's electricity so that we could see what we're able to use um, our abilities on in mm. in the thing to come. So so that was my idea that I was doing through the night. So I imagine that I doesn't get a lot of sleep, uh, but wakes up kind of hazy uh, and. Um, remembering the state of like the area in like a little bit of a panic almost like mm. kind of like oh like like <laughs> like yeah we, we forgot that 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 was also um happening i think that um the last that i remembers is that uh the area was with I on the board and so she'll go to where she thinks uh sky went to go sleep and give a knock and and hope that they're able to answer uh there is no one answers the door 
but you hear soft snoring. Okay. <laughs> go open the door. Go on in. Uh, how are they looking? Looking better. Okay. Uh, they've got their skin back. That's great. More, Good. uh, more petals than mm -hmm. before. Not full, but more. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mo? And they have a sarsaparilla bottle with water in it. In the yeah, it's like oh, upside that's... down. <laughs> <laughs> Directly implanted into the soil. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Directly implanted into our soul, too. Yes. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, also has arms. So that's nice. Oh. No. Okay. Um, Ike's gonna go over and, um, well, I don't know if I should wake you, but I'm just gonna tap on the glass of the sarsaparilla bottle just really gently, just to see. Oh. Words! Actual words! It's nice to hear those again from you. What does that mean? You were quite grumbly for a day. Yeah, I was almost dead. I, I know! I, I'm trying not to panic about it, but I'm very glad you're not Ted. I'm not dead. <laughs> um. Now, can I ask you, um, how much you remember about what's been happening since you almost died? <laughs> well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the, the, I, I don't remember how to say this word, the kibosh on that, because. Oh. I feel inebriated. It's, oh. I'm, I woke up, but I'm sleepy. Oh, okay. Well, that's okay. Um, I know that, well, I and Azam were here, and the sheriff uh, set us up here, so we're okay for now. Um, I think that uh, a scrap and the rest are are nearby, ish, mm. uh, maybe. But it's okay. If you need time to rest, that's okay. But um, no, come here. Come here. What? Come here. Oh. She 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 leans it. You know, and just like one of the one of the arms, just like kind of unroots from the soil and just like wraps on your shoulder. Yeah, no, you're great. I'm good. <laughs> uh, doctor. Good. Uh, and will like kind of like cup their little root fingers around your face being like, you're good. You're, you're good. Oh, thank you, um, Doctor. You're very great, too. Um, I'm going to bring you with me. You get some rest, because I, I want you to feel better so that so that we can talk again okay okay that's that's great I mean if you got anything to say you can say it now like a coin toss if it if it makes it past anyway I love you Do 
did they fall are they asleep is that what just happened did they yeah, just they like just, conk asleep? Just conk. <laughs> okay all right okay okay uh a question for for mo above the table is uh is your skateboard still here like yeah was... skateboard is in andre's control until oh, okay okay Andrea's legs are got it it's okay, like cool. it's it's like perched on like leaning against the wall in that cool kid way yeah good where you can see the deck all right okay we're, we'll talk about that soon. We'll talk. That's gonna be. That's <laughs> okay. Uh, and she'll put the etheric on the skateboard. All right. Good. Okay. Good. Uh, let's you just go, 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 go. Scoot, scoot, scoot. And we'll scoot the board out, out. and we'll. Follow and is going to look for, assuming either, I mean, the last time she went to sleep here, Azam and Sky and uh, Poncho were here. So she's going to look for whoever she can find first uh, when she comes out. Um, it's, uh, coming down. it's quite quiet at the minute, so you can probably hear Scrap and Sky talking outside. Um uh, the tower, so, like, yeah. just so you get, like, I has an idea of where people are, um, mm -hmm. but you're, you know, you're still inside. It's, uh, you know, Theorex on the board. It depends on where Azam is. Where is Azam? Uh, not in his room. So if you get the chance to look at it, it's, the bed's been untouched. Uh, there's a, a tin for a special kind of biscuit that has faded away that is just filled with spools of thread and needles. <laughs> uh, one has been... <laughs> Picked out. One has been picked out, and underneath it is written the word "Eig." Uh, it is bright purple thread, not pink, purple. Um, and there's a, a small spool of gold thread that has practically vanished, uh, just sitting on the side as well. Um, there's no evidence that he even unpacked. And it's it's Ike's armor is is what it is. It's Ike's armor is a uh, hanging. Freshly steamed and pressed on the side. Uh, every single little wound that had, was available has been like properly top stitched up to the point where it'd still be waterproof mm -hmm. uh, in the same purple thread that matches the pink, except it doesn't. And in places where patches were necessary, there's like these black, shiny fabric patches that are the close enough match you can imagine he got. Yeah. Yeah. Uh in that case, she's gonna she'll grab that and she'll save the the note that Azam wrote as well, um, and to to just visualize uh, because her armor was being stitched up. Uh, I imagine that I guess wearing a onesie, the kind that has like the butt flap with the two buttons. And Perfect. <laughs> like the, Perfect. the the booties, uh, yeah. <laughs> does the tail come out of the butt flap, or does it like above the butt? It's flap? it's it. Yeah, she's she's got it like coming out the top of the, mm. of the where the seam is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Perfect. Yeah. Um. So she looks into the room, sees this. Uh. Again, Theory X not awake, so she grabs her stuff, grabs the note from Azam. Okay. Uh, Azam is either asleep somewhere inappropriately or hasn't slept yet. Either way, I think we need to find him. Uh, and we'll continue walking down uh, to the main floor. Um, Azam, where where are you? What has Azam been doing uh, this night? Last Once night. Azam has f finished stitching up Ig's uh, suit and also mm. repaired the patch in his scarf with a new golden one, uh, he's been had a big old piece of paper, a literal piece of paper, and a piece of charcoal 
we're not going to talk about where he got the charcoal from. That might be too disturbing for some viewers. Uh, <laughs> and he's been wandering around the village, just like sketching out the vague structure of the place, which streets are bigger than which streets. Mm. He's trying to get a good idea in his head of where are the weak points here? Where are the points of ingress? That kind of thing. You, um, around the, around the same time as everyone else is meeting, you're walking past a, uh, a small, um, what would be the equivalent of like a grocery store, just a general store, uh, behind a bunch of farmlands. Yesterday you met a, kind of like a, blue velociraptor humanoid um type and they as you as you like walk through sketch you see them on the farm uh tilling some land and then planting some seeds the farm is actually it's it's going surprisingly well a lot of a lot of weird um crops that have been cultivated to sustain the like very very harsh landscape since it pretty much all that is around here is is just pure desert so a lot of desert plants things like that um they spot you what are you sketching the map your lovely town Thank you very much. I think so too. It's a nice field you've got there. Uh, how's your irrigation? How's your irrigation looking? You know the plants here don't need much. Um, a small amount of water every few weeks, and they grow okay. But we mainly feed the food to cattle that we. Uh, we rear and then get milk and uh, meat from every every few months. This is m purely for the town supply. We we don't make enough to be able to take it out. Unfortunately, it makes a lot of sense. What do you what do you sell here? What do you make here? The town itself. Well. There is a, uh, a, come, leads you to a, uh, just, just, just like a point at the edge of the farm where you can kind of see the, see the full town. You see this kind of shoddy, slightly flickering occasionally when a, uh, a, a specifically like large pile of dust blows through it, a sign that says, welcome to Neutrino Downs. These, uh, wires that are hung up basically like all above you and also like th flowing like a spider's web throughout the main town um neutrino downs and well the planet of nos really but us specifically have a access to a, a mine which holds this ore um that no one no other planet gets uh it's called a terinium and it is unique because it in itself like holds a charge of electricity not like copper where it's like a good conduit it holds electricity itself the That's reason right. why i say essentially like these natural batteries the reason why i say neutrino downs and not really anywhere else is because the Baron and New Moors. New Moors is a it's like the central hub. It's almost like a, a city that's about half of a small country. But a lot of the export of uh Durinium goes to there, but the Baron has kind of like soaked up all these small farms and small mines and bled them dry. That there's a um is a company called fuck um it begins with this sut i think sut energy. energy they 
few hundred years ago came here, soaked it all up, and left when there was a big environmental backlash. We are actually on quite stable ground, but if you go further in, further into the crumbling sands, it's it's ruins. There are all these huge, huge caverns, and the ground itself, the planet's surface, is crumbling away. That's why it's called the, uh, the, the crumbling sands. That's why we call it it. But Adrena Downs, it stands still, and the Baron won't take us. I've been after Poncho to fight back for a while, and with the arrival of a, of a few people who can help us out, because that's really it. We, we, we fight. We've, we've known to, you know, butt heads, and, and everyone here knows how to defend themselves. We kind of have to here, but we don't have the numbers or a real expertise of how to join, and, you know, I'm, I'm all for it. I've been fighting for this for a while. But, um, yeah. Because if, if the Baron wins and takes it, then that's, you know, that's this... All. Stan's done. I carefully take the marshal's badge out of my pocket because I haven't been wearing it up until this point. <laughs> onto the scarf. I'll hey. do what I can. But. How much are you willing to lose to keep this place? If this place goes. Then we lose it all anyway. The only way. For all of us, this is our town. This town can hold a few hundred people, but everyone has up and left. New Moors is nice, and it's it's the only real uh, funnel for people to be able to get out. They have a huge spaceport on the upper level on the planet's surface. And if people, you know, want to go, it's a few weeks ride but that's where they go to get out everyone here it's not easy living this is our home this town is our home if people are here this is where we fight now i don't i want to fight article her android runs the antique shop they don't know any better and I guess is quite stubborn Tide Van owner of the inn wants to fight Kurtz in uh, like a uh, large scaled black scorpion looking guy wants to fight Yelp is too old they've been a minor since they were a child uh, and now they're you know getting pushed out we were all born here, and we were all raised. New Moors doesn't have anything for us. A lot of us can't afford a ticket out off the planet. They're expensive. We don't really pay in commerce here. We, this farm keeps people alive. The ore keeps the lights on, and the, what little we can trade for water from nearby towns is getting smaller and smaller. You need to find anyone who needs to be kept safe, truly safe, and prepare them. That's number one. We don't want kids in the middle of this, all this. No. We don't have kids here, not really. Anyone who has a child ups and leaves. This, this isn't a life, not a place to grow. We don't have any form of education. Not anymore. It may not be children, but... An adult man is only known for minds of their entire life and has an entire life ahead of them. Dying one day to save more minehood? Still a child. Look, I've had a lot taken. A lot. More than people can say. You might lose a town. I lost a planet. But it becomes about cost and triage. Some things are too far gone, you leave them behind. Some things could survive by themselves. Some things need saving. Find what needs saving about this place. 
so that way you can protect it should the worst happen. I have to get back to the farm. The good farm. They thinking about the words that you said, but it's it's kind of it's one of those things where they you know, it needed to be said to them, but they've been they've had like this one track mind for a whole time and now you've like brought this thing of like is it is they, you know, you got to you got to protect you, you got to keep people safe and this might not be you know. Mm -hmm. They 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 I got to walk back to the farm is like is is an understanding that you're correct but a an upset to their what they've been what what they you know they're passionate about and what they they're currently trying to work toward so they um walk well, off it's a good farm hmm. nay uh get back to millen zam is just going to continue on sketching throughout the town making note of like loose supplies that could be turned into a barricade if needed uh, empty buildings or buildings that are so run down they would fall apart if you tried to have a, a shoot them up in it, that kind of stuff. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You you find like a lot of uh, a lot of things that if it comes to it, you you find like this is a great place to like hide out. This is a place that we can um, like loot and almost tear down and build up things that not like huge projects but things that you could do in a few days in a in a like a few weeks i i can imagine that there has been there were times where on Irem a town was like essentially empty or needed last standing so you were like okay this is how we do this and it's a little different a lot of that was rock faces and and things so they had a bit more protective measures but you know it's transferable skills you continue to sketch get like a good haul you're like i can imagine you're pretty like yeah this is a good i, I did well and naturally through the way that the town is built, make your way back to the um, the main square where you sp go. On. Sorry. No, um, no, please. But, but before uh, I fully wend my way back, now that I've heard about these this battery ore, I want to know if I can spot any of it or how to get it here beyond just going into the cavern mines. Like if there's a small box left around, if I could get a sample somehow. Keep my eyes out for it. Without going into houses, they don't kind of just like leave it lying around, but you do after um, Peckin, who uh, they introduced himself yesterday and like kind of after you leave, you're like, oh, that was Peckin. Um, you, you see, they like, after they point out what it's been like forged into, you see a lot of signs and a lot of like kind of like frameworks of buildings having these like large metal girders that like you know guard the outside of it and did you go into your room oh no you said you, it wasn't touched oh no you put stuff in the room and then you left correct yeah, I was in the room and left. Yeah. when you when you walked in briefly you would have seen that um a lot of like minor home decor uh granted that hasn't been used in a very long time but uh connected to lights uh the like there's like an old uh radio that isn't able to pick up any channels that is powered by it a lot of like uh anything that would be like technological is powered by these batteries some of which you were kind of disappointed to find out that they have powered down um so there is clearly a lifespan on the ore after it's mined, but a lot of it you're surprised to know that it is still, like, buildings still have this, like, charged ore in it. So it lasts a very long time. Maybe it's charged by, like, sunlight, or the more of it creates it in small chunks, it loses its power, like, fairly quickly. But yes, you right. see, you find a lot of it, a lot able to be scrapped and, and things. And I went my way back to the end. Wind your way back. Poncho, last we left you, you were hopping into the inn. And last we saw Ig, Ig was hopping 
out of the inn. I imagine the two of you cross paths briefly um, whilst uh, Poncho, you were intending to grab everyone and then move out. You see I lightly pushing along this hoverboard with a looking better theory act. Uh, <laughs> Awkwardly, I imagine awkwardly trying to make it down the stairs since it's a hoverboard and you're trying not to push the no, hoverboard down. It's this fine. <laughs> it's easy. <laughs> it I do a... imagine it does like a little like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I truthfully, I don't even know that the stairs are big enough for that to even like. Oh yeah, it's not here. like they're like planes. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's not it's... like you know <laughs> pyramid-sized steps. You know? Yeah. Yeah, 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 maybe it's just I, my main worry was that it like almost like a slide just picks up speed as it goes down. Um, and theory <laughs> is it's like rudely I awoken, very, but but I is like holding I, on. I would be senses. very would be very mindful of that, um, especially in theory state. Currently, I definitely imagine that the hoverboard is programmed to have like a safety installed for that, but guy has removed it. <laughs> <laughs> to be more rad yes mm -hmm. um if we we run into poncho out the uh coming in as we're coming out um and uh azam is not in the building out the out of the building yeah okay uh so if we're if, if we're on our way out and we run into poncho um oh oh Sheriff! Hi! Hi, Doctor. Uh, oh. Did y'all have a good, uh, nice sleep? I'm... so sorry. Who are you? Oh, that's, uh, sorry. The last time we introduced ourselves, you were quiet in the situation. You, uh, uh, the colloquial term, I guess, would be loopy. Uh, I'm Sheriff Poncho, uh, Sheriff of Neutrino Downs. I've helped uh, your crew after you all crashed a few miles back that away, and I helped y'all get yourselves settled in here. Thank you. you. Cool. Yeah, that that is a that is that is very cool. Um, uh, is are are they okay? So, going to ask. So we have um. Well, I. Okay. So, first, um. Have you seen the rest of our crew? Because we, I have an idea. I know that we have um, problems coming our way. And I I have some things that might help. Um, but well, I would all, oh. Well, that's exactly why I, I was coming to find y'all, actually. Um, I encountered a couple of y'all friends over there coming over the hill with the, well, what's left of your ship. Uh, quite the you know fast talking uh gentleman with one arm and uh a teenager uh skies out back talking to him right now oh we, oh. Just, we just got it fixed um, oh you did i i'm sorry to hear oh, that because so sad yeah i'm oh. sorry to hear that it doesn't look uh it looks <laughs> like it's, it's definitely worse for wear that is so sad oh. um Um, do you, okay. have any, do you have any spare ship parts? Well, Doctor, I, I, I apologize, but uh, we aren't much of a, you know, a, a port town or anything. As you can see, we're in the middle of a desert, so not many ships take off or land here. You are honestly the first ship we even had and come touching down in the area in who knows how long. I have... A different question for you, uh, 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 Sheriff Poncho. Do you have a, any farmers? Uh, yeah, we have plenty of farmers here. Well, who's your best? Who's... Well, he, like, hikes up his pants when he says that. Well... It all really goes down to uh, personal opinions. If you're looking for a farm and land who's good at, uh, you know, raising up the cattle and preparing them for, you know, 
uh, for you know, raising them and feeding them and preparing them for uh, food consumption purposes. We have one farmer for that. But if you're looking for someone who's more of a vegetable farmer, who's well, well trained in irrigation and rooting, then uh, we do have other farmers for that. Uh, what is your cup of tea? The second one. I see. I'll definitely introduce you to them later. Uh, is, uh, is, uh, does that have to do with uh, preparing your ship or? No, not at all. It's just that um, Dr. Theriak here is um, very needed, and I don't know that um, I was wondering if somebody knew the kind of medicine that might work for them and might get them feeling better. Maybe there's somebody who's got extra knowledge in that. So basically, uh, you're asking uh, if someone could help you with your friend there and helping uh, them heal by maybe uh, letting them use their farming equipment. Right. I uh, see. Uh, I'm certain if you ask politely and, and you explain your situation, they'll be more than happy to help. Okay. Thank you. Uh, is is that okay with you, Doctor? You're, you're gonna. Are you gonna farm me? It looks at me. <laughs> says that. <laughs> Not remotely. I was just wondering if maybe they might have some nutrition that might help better than. And she taps on the old sarsaparilla bottle <laughs> filled with water. Maybe something that'll help you heal faster. Nutrition. Neutrinos. Trino Downs. That's where we are. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Assam! <laughs> <laughs> um, either... Uh, I imagine that Podcho, I and Thera kind of have this conversation meander around to the outside where it's like all all yeah. of the patchwork can like spot each other. Sky scrap off in the distance with Flair and Keelan like hauling the uh, remains of of the patchwork over over the small hill and finally getting it free. There's a small cheer from uh, everyone. And uh, Azam cresting the corner with map in hand and idea in mind uh, so everyone is kind of within earshot of each other something happened um, it's okay I just we I were looking drink. for you <laughs> yo I check this out I've been practicing okay you ready you ready okay ma'am that's fucking good. That is fucking, that good, is right? fucking good, it's, though. It's great. It's great. Thank you. Uh, I, yeah, um, um, I've actually been practicing too. Flair says. <sighs> <sighs> I had it early. I swear to God, I was doing this. Other. To be fair, they were doing it on the ride over, and it was very cool. They can whistle with both their fingers. It's really, it's pretty, it's pretty impressive. I know. Keep going. I'm gonna. It hides away and is like. <sighs> this might take a while. What's the plan for today? Uh, so there's um. Well, I don't know what the plan is, and I, I I'm sorry if there already is one. Um, but uh, I, I, as as um, I I thought maybe you might have an eye for this. So I um stayed up quite a bit. Uh. Also, we might have a solution for healing Dr. Theriac sooner. Um, but I I found um, all the bits of, and I, I pull out, um, I think what Ike has probably is not necessarily like a, a picture map, but like um, maybe like a, a little hologram. Mm. of like the spots of 
where like electricity is by potency that like uh, that Verbal was able to find the degree to which would be up to you, Matt. But like I, I'm yeah. imagining like what that is and like I, I think could... that and uh, Azam's like charcoal map like like Azam can like fit it pretty neatly like, over like a thing so it's yeah so it like overlays it uh okay. just to help Azam in the future he's actually like shading in the segments of high electric yeah yeah, yeah yeah so okay so this is what verbal was able to help me find um so this is where these are the spots where I could be helpful um, and, and, and I don't know exactly where to go from there, but I figured it's a start. I do actually have something that, that might help. <clears throat> I reach into a pocket and I pull out, um, a pocket recorder that I picked up on the way here. And inside is a small piece, teeny tiny battery of the ore. Oh, nice. Smart. Of the what? The ore, it's so it, it's not like normal metal. It's not conductive. Oh. It charges and holds charge. Oh. It's what okay. this place is made out of. I, I figured if you had a small sample, you'd figure out what you could do with it. Oh. Well, you so, and Firiac. Okay, so I'll uh, I'll dig into this. Um, I. Also, thanks for my armor, because uh, I would be dead in a second in in this getup. Well, see, I did, 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 did my note get it right? Right, fellas? Very much? <laughs> it's extremely close. In fact, it actually matches this. And she's over the onesie. She does still have her cloak on. Uh, <laughs> and so the purple of the cloak, uh, matches the patches of the, um, of the pink of the armor. Oh, did I accidentally use red? It's, it's like a, um, they're all in the same family, really. I miss the old days. I used to, like, mark it with pencil on which one was which. Hey, <laughs> Zom, does hmm. anything look different about me well first i'd have to ask who you are my dear i don't recognize you ha 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 god <laughs> well first i'd say there's a mighty fine stetson you have my Second, what? stetson stetson Stet it's, it's kind of hat ah. uh i do like the kerchief Around your neck. Thank you. The sheriff gave it to me. Nice work, sheriff. And the vest looks amazing. Well, a little bit tight. Are you not breathing hard? What? Oh. No, my question was answered. We can move on. Okay. Right. So, um, my apologies, sheriff. I, I understand. I, I've just been briefly filled in. But to the best of my knowledge, we have seven days before these the, these guys come Hoodlums. back hoodlums come back am, um, am, am i right there six the, the, now right. yes you're you're right it says right. now six days before the baron comes back with his crew and um i feel like i i should uh ask y'all now that all of you are here in six days it's gonna be a bloodbath I'm not going to put it lightly. It's going to get violent. Yeah, I hope they have good healers. Nice. That is actually a, quite the uh, badass thing for you to say, Sky. But, Thank you, uh, I know. But I will be honest with you. The last crew... The last crew that I had fight alongside with me. I'm the only one left. They all died that so I'm gonna tell them, tell y'all the same thing I told them. This isn't your fight, not one bit. Y'all can leave and I won't be offended or be upset. 
All of you have your own lives to live. All of y'all have your own paths to walk. And that path shouldn't be my fight. That path shouldn't be violence that I'm thrusting upon y'all. So I'm giving you a chance. If you don't want there to be in this fight, you can leave right now. I won't call you cowards or anything. With what ship? Girl has a point. No. You, you did us a solid. We would have been stumbling for weeks before we eventually ran out of steam. I think this is this is a fine a fine payment for your kindness. I realize you think it, that you're um, a fear to some days forcing people into a bad situation, but you've done everything you can to prevent it. Everything. You're not forcing us. You're not demanding things of us. We're not owing us. We are not owing you. That is wrong. It's done in here. If we can fix it, we shall. And if we cannot, we'll fight to do it anyway. Rest assured, that's not a choice you are thrusting upon us. It is a choice we're making for ourselves. At that point, you kind of like the camera is like looking from Poncho's view. And you kind of see these ghostly images of the former members of his crew standing amongst the patchwork crew. And it's almost like each one of the member of the crew is like a representative of his past crew. And he looks at them and he tips his hat down a bit and he sighs. <sighs> Dang, it's a, it's a terrible day for rain, ain't it? Are you crying? No, no I, just... I, I saw it too. A cloud went overhead. All right, well, since y'all are going to help out, uh, I'm certain uh, you all want to walk around this town, pretty much look around for any kind of uh, points to strategic points, any kind of points to uh, maybe build up some blockades or what have you. As I like flatten out my map, could I do a, a tactician roll to see how well I marked Ooh, these? Ooh, uh, yeah, that's a good idea. That's my profession. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's do it today. Do I actually get... Can, can I actually, can I assist in that since I laid over... Some the, electricity like, points? Lots of electricity points. Can I, like, give a, uh, whatever, I don't know, some sort of bonus? Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, that, an, that. Ass an assist in Staffandur, I believe, mm -hmm. is a plus two. Yeah, um, yes. great. Yeah. While they're doing that, I'm going to teach Theriac how to do an ollie. <laughs> uh, D20 plus 9 plus 2. Probably 19 on that D20. Uh, 30. Oh, good wouldn't lord. It so, wouldn't it be very funny if Theriac was actually so sick at skateboarding? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's listen, it's 20 kickflip, McFlip. 50 50 boneless off the. Yeah, you've got, you so many, you've got so many roots. You have so many roots, and you right have that now. analytical mind of just like Pythagoras theorem your way to a sick ass Ollie. This, right. All, like the, the math meme. Like, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Should I, should I roll for that? You want to do a sick ass Ollie? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Romeo. Oh, I, oh I, I was like tech decking you. Are you actually, as soon as I let um, go, like... Roll me a physical sure. science check. I for... also, I need everyone to know, I just spilled all my Cheerios. Please can... No! I, I, will, I will resolve this after the... After. Yeah. Um, with a 30, uh, you 
So, so okay, so you want to know, like, how well you have, like, mapped out the town and, like, little strategic points and how things, like, were able yes. to so coalesce? There are three things I lo I'm looking for specifically to make sure I mark down. Places that can be safe houses. Mm -hmm. Places that can be barricaded so I can shove them in through different areas and not ruin the whole neighborhood. Oh, nice. And places in which easy traps can be conducted. Uh, there is a, a there is a lot of like abandoned places here um which is like a little uh slows you down like a little bit when it comes to planning out uh like where is best to um to attack but you because of that it also like helps out a little bit because you would pretty quickly be able to tell that the most amount of power is coming most amount of power and also the best like upkeep in terms of a building would probably be the the saloon the inn um it is in the middle of the street there's a few abandoned buildings that uh, the people would have to get to. There's, there isn't a back exit. There's like the one door at the front. And the only two like vantage points are at either end of the street. Like this main square has... They're big. They're big roads, which you're not a huge fan of. But there are. There's like the a big road in and a big road out, and they both have to pass through several abandoned buildings and then slot themselves into to get to the end that has one entrance, one exit. Aside from windows at the top, which you do note that you can probably like push comes to shove, jump out of windows, uh, and even make. Like you could like bust out a like part of a wall to to get onto the rooftop since the saloon is like quite significantly bigger than other buildings. Uh, in terms of like safekeeping, something that you didn't really have time to like go and mark out, but you when you spoke to Peckin and with Ig's like uh Electromap. Yeah, exactly. You get the idea of the mine itself could either be like a good holdout or like a great place to have people stay in since it's um it like it could be barricaded super easy. Super dangerous to barricade a mine, like holy baloney, but um people could maybe hide in there the only problem is is if you lose the battle people would immediately go because that's their goal is to get to the mine and own it they they would immediately skirt there um and aside from that there is like you know minor pockets of houses that people could hide in but like ponchos for example is a house everyone does have their own like uh everyone does have their own building that they live in but yeah, you have, like, the main notable is the saloon, you believe, is probably the best holdout. And the uh, and the mine is a possi possible place. It's just a place of note that you didn't go investigate, but you could if you wanted to. Uh, I relay pretty much everything that you just said uh, in Azam voice, obviously. To, of course. <laughs> uh, to my compatriots. My thinking is we use these four buildings. I point out some of the ones that are completely abandoned and have been for a while mm -hmm. as safe houses and hope that the battle stays far away. If it gets closer, they can run to the mines. But if we do get to the mines, it will be a last stand. I last, agree. last stand. I agree. If we can get, if we do need to go to the mines, we could even try to bottleneck them in there and then, well, just take them out if it needs to get to that point. But if that does happen, we will be putting ourselves in a whole lot of danger. What if with explosives, we lock them in the mine and then just wait for them to starve? 
Well, the problem with that is if we do explode the mine, there is a possible chance that it could cause a chain reaction. And, well, if the mine gets wrecked, that's our life. That's pretty much our lifestyle. That's true. If we don't have that, we don't have anything. Also, we don't know how well this ore reacts to being exploded. Mm. Um, Not a bad idea. No, I like it. Uh, two I, things. Uh, no, you go. Well, uh, uh, just a question. Um, the electricity in this city, is it coming from the ore? Or is it coming from somewhere else? It's um, coming from the ore. Uh, the ore itself is a purely sustainable electric source. It stores its naturally produced electricity. So then in that case, it's better not to trap them in there and instead let me and Verbal go through the mines. We can, um, we can, uh, well, do our thing from down there and uh, affect what's going on up top without. How would you affect it? Well, if the electricity that's running the town is coming from down below in the mines, uh, we could, uh, well, um, well, I could try, um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> uh, let me see uh, what example I could, uh, I could say, uh, do a what I did to oh sorry Flair your skates um to one of their uh pistols I don't say sorry they were attacking us because they stole our stuff That's right I know but they're friends now oh. so I I appreciate that uh, okay. thank you I but anyway I, I I could do the same thing uh but instead suck it down into the electricity of the mines. And so forth. Uh, you know, just, d I, I could kind of be... Oh. I think, don't I have goggles that can see in the dark? Or did I... Uh, they are telescopic. Not... Telescope. Because yeah. that'd be cool if we, like, lured them in and then we were like, now! And all the lights turned off and then we... Wait. And then the lights turn on and all their buddies are on the ground. That'd be funny. That'd be funny. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could still do it. Yeah, but how would we see? I mean, I could try and whip something up. Is that a thing that I can do? I'm not well, sure. Well, here's an idea. We could shut, cut off the power to the town, and we can use go low tech. Some torches, light up the area with that. Oh. Iron sights for pistols and things like that. If you think I, that's a possibility. I I will tell you, I will be pretty much useless if we do that route. I I can barely shoot a gun. What if you had your own battery that, that you could draw from but nobody else could? Uh, get is a that chunk a thing? of that ore. You get a chunk of that ore, put it in a backpack and strap it on you. You have the only power source in the area. We could talk to we could talk to the art. We could talk to our old antique dealer. He could probably whip up some nice little portable power pack for you. Make a big old strap of ore, put it on your back. See what we can do with it. But weren't we just talking about how being close to the ore is very dangerous in case? That's yep. in case yes, if there's an explosion. But if she is able to, you know, duck around dodge and keep herself safe. That I can do. Dodging I'm good at. Um, I was wondering just if there's a... So, I mean, all of us are in pretty bad shape and we're probably going to need a rest for most of the days. Is there any chance uh, scrap 
you could give me a hand, maybe maybe Sky, with like a, I don't know, could we test out like a portable healing thing, just in case things get particularly dicey? Theory, I know that, you know, you are good with uh, on the road healing and stuff. Maybe building something to give us a boost could be something that we could do. I could try something. I'm not I'm not the most efficient at healing, but I can assist with giving you all uh, a little boost to keep you uh, keep your your aims better or just whatever you want to do Great. with it. Or or keep the enemies uh, more uh, but less capable, whatever, might, um... Perfect. Yep. Guy? How many dudes are we expecting here? Because we're talking about a full-on rumble, but there's, like, six of us. So I just... How good are our odds? That's what I want to know. If our odds were good, I wouldn't have given you that speech beforehand. So did we want to have like a plan A of outsmarting them and then plan B kick their ass? I'm going to be honest with you, Sky. They are very smart. So are we. It's, I'm not doubting your intelligence skills or your ways of trickery. But they will be coming in ready to kill and ready to fight. If we try to outthink them, they will just try to outshoot us. No, no. Go on. No, no, please. Well, I was just wondering, you said that there was an antiques dealer. Do you know if there's any like passing merchants or anything? If we could take like a day trip out to someone that has weapons and armor and things that are a little better. We have credits that we could well, pick up things. He like pulls out a pocket watch, flips it open. The pocket watch is as big as like his head because he's a little tiny mouse. And it looks like, you know, like the white rabbit from Isles and One. It looks like, oh, well, but actually it looks like maybe tomorrow old Cletus will be coming through town. And Cletus is our arms dealer. They're the one who supplies us any kind of weapons, tools, farming equipment what have you. Perfect. I mean, yeah, if we spend the day, um, if we spend the day haggling with them, try to get as much as we could, we could all get new things and then maybe pass them off to the more, uh, you know, some townsfolk that want to join us. If that's a possibility, if that's a thing. More people is, you know, never a bad thing. In most cases, anyway. Pacha looks a little bit pensive. And then kind of thinks back to, uh, to what Azam said. You're right. If people do want to fight, then we should give them the option. But we will not take someone who doesn't know what, what we're doing. We don't have time to train people, and more importantly... No, we don't. We're not going to bring innocents into this just because we're scared. I could start a rumor that everybody's going to join the fight, so that everybody thinks that they're the only person that wouldn't, which would be really embarrassing. Not a bad idea. Just make sure that <laughs> people here know it's a rumor and not a reality, unless they start, you know, fighting against each other, try and be the first to sign up, you know? Uh... Of a big concern I have, having done this before. I've marked several zones on this map where I'd like us to stick to fighting too. These are places that can survive an onslaught. And I don't just mean, you know, we'll survive it. I mean the building structures will. If we allow fighting to get willy-nilly, we might be careful with our shots. They probably will not be. And this place still needs to house people at the end of the day, so... So you're saying we take advantage of the fact that they're just going to be coming in guns a blazing? And go. May I ask? May I see the map? Absolutely. I. I like the map. Turn on the table. 
takes the map, pulls it up. It's all huge in his hand because he's a tiny, cute little mouse. <laughs> In his arm's hand, it was just like this big. It was like a <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's the size of a newspaper. <laughs> Such a perspective <laughs> shift. Oh, this is a very well planned out map. Um, because right here, this is where the old schoolhouse used to be. Um, it's not active anymore, but we could definitely use that as a. Well, you were saying you wanted to use one of these buildings as a as a medical area. I don't remember saying so, but yeah, actually, very good idea. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I think that would be a good idea. A little yeah, place to people to fall into, get healed up within a couple seconds, and then be able to get back out again. It's semi-central, but behind all the main streets, so you're not going to accidentally wander into fighting, but you are close by. Or we could right. lure everyone in there and then burn it to the ground. Jeez. How, how about we use that as a plan B? To bring up, this guy's point, how many buildings are we willing to lose? Well, odds are, they're all going to crowd into to the saloon. And we can make sure they do if we want to play it fancy, but an easy answer might be to lure as many in there as possible and blow it up. Is that something that you're comfortable risking? And the answer he, can be no. He looks at the map for a bit. And he points to uh, one building. It looks like it was probably maybe like a, a town hall. There. If we can lure him into the town hall, no one, we don't use that anymore. We don't have a mayor or anything. It's just pretty much just gathering dust and old documents and records are kept there. Not we a good deal. Or well, we could sell it. I had an idea that was going to stay in my head because I thought it was way too dumb and we're probably not going to do it. But this Baron is picking up ne'er-do-wells wherever he can, right? All right. I know a ne'er-do-well with a resume. So if we wanted a double agent situation, if we wanted somebody to go in and be like, hey, they're keeping all the ore in the old town hall and they're gonna ship it out tomorrow, that I could get my friend to do that. If your friend can get here in a couple of days time, then use that resource. Oh, my friend can get here in a couple of days time. I mean, all right. Sky, you thinking of working pretending to work with them for a little bit i don't think they'll take you on this crusade so fast it's not me i don't have a criminal record but my friend does all right all right she's young idealistic cutthroat when she wants to be talented talented <laughs> intelligent intelligent keep going <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, understandably, understandably responding to orders, which is what a lot of these people look for. So I, it's not the worst option, but it is the most dangerous. If you, if they decide to take you on this job, this, this town attack and then either see you not firing back or you open fire at them they're just going to turn around and you'll be ribbons within seconds i don't know if that's a oh yeah no if this goes really bad they're going to walk into town with a gun to my head and everything's going to be over that's why i'm saying it was going to stay in my head and it's probably a dumb idea and we probably shouldn't do it but it's high risk high reward and it's a very easy way to lure everybody into a building but um maybe we can think of something else but if we were to sell it you need to do you need to shoot one of these rebels in the street that would be, you know, your bargaining ship, your entry fee. Just... I... Poncho, I'm sorry if this is... Because I know that you've already suffered quite a lot and you're, you've lost quite a lot of people. I am A-OK -okay with us defending this town. And doing whatever it takes to to 
take out this thread. I'm wondering if we are being a bit too cutthroat about the whole execution of it. I mean, instead of... There is a difference, you know, between defending a town and hatching a plan to lure everybody in and blow them up. So maybe maybe we just try to stay on the defensive. I for if not for their sakes necessarily, but for Well our collective sakes. Bags, right? No, no, she is absolutely right. I just want the Baron to leave us alone. As you can see, there's there's not a lot of people left in this town. And it's because of the Baron. People who start families here, they leave the next day. They don't People don't raise families here in Neutrino Downs. You come here after you finish raising your family. You come here to end the, to close out your life, you know, to live the quiet life. I can't promise people the quiet life if every single couple of months this, the Baron comes in threatening our lives. Is what you're planning cutthroat? <clears throat> it's incredibly cutthroat. It's incredibly violent. But honestly, I'm dang tired of it. If y'all didn't come through this town today, I'd probably be doing what we're doing right now, but it'll be by myself. I think that Ike's got something to say. Oh, just just wondering how much you know about him in particular. Well, the Baron? As a person. You know, not besides the violence. Has he ever given you a scrap of anything? You know, like what he's afraid of, what he wants, what he cares about. Something that something we can use that might help us keep this plan as a last resort. Baron, all he cares about is what's underneath this town. If he had his way, and he motions an arm to the town, all of this would be gone. He okay. would just tear down this town, dig up the ore, drain the earth dry, probably sell it off to someone else, and then move on to the next area. He does not care about us. He does not care about the people here. All he wants is the ore. And he doesn't care about his own crew, right? Exactly. I think we have a perfect solution. We do everything we're planning, but we don't shoot to kill. Not just yet. We attract the Baron to wander in, threaten one of us to maybe two of us. Final stand. Like, we take out the Baron, we take them all out. Because no one's there to pay him anymore, and they don't believe in him because he doesn't believe in them. We all we need, all we need is one death. We don't know that for sure, right? Oh no, I can I can assure you, it is one hundred percent that. 
all the Baron does is buy these all buy these outlaws. He's not giving them a good life or anything. The only thing he's promising them is some pocket money and to come in and do this job. Well, his crew isn't particularly invested in this. Not if it, uh, any of these crew members have some kind of personal beef with me. So we don't hurt them, or we can try not to hurt them. Are any of them going to be pissed they've lost out on a paycheck? Well, of course. Are there jobs in town? Well, there's plenty of places here that people can move in and start their own businesses. Well, there's homes empty in town. Is there... Do you think... If... We can pull this off. If we can just take out the Baron, do you think the people of Neutrino Down would have some room for... I'll be honest with you, um, they're former criminals. Sure. These people that he hires are murderers, and they've done plenty of horrible things. I'll be I'll be frank with you. I'd rather not have any of these people living in my town. Even if the Baron did just hire them. Because he hires the worst of the worst. These aren't people that you can offer, hey, I'll give you a better life if you put down your weapons. The only thing they respond to is money. I, I get what you're trying to say here. But these aren't people that you can give some kind of redemption arc for. If I may, uh, a friend of mine, a rather old friend of mine, um, illustrated to me the dangers of my existence. But, point out something else. They're a mercenary. Were, was, at least for a time. But I made them believe in something. The truth is, yes, people get motivated by money, but money doesn't keep you warm at night. Money doesn't keep your head filled with good thoughts. What keeps that going is hope. I'm not saying it's possible. I'm not saying all of these narrow duels walking into your town should be welcomed in with open arms. I'm not saying any of that. But I am saying some of them, some of them will want a purpose out of this. Some of them want it right now. I just don't know what it is yet. Poncho, perhaps, if I may be bold enough to suggest it, you should look for a, a purpose beyond sheriff and consider being mayor. Because this town needs something to believe in. And until such time it does, you're a good enough substitute. Pancho looks really taken back by those words. And by looks taken back, you just see one eyebrow twitch. Um, hmm. Mayor, huh? No, I'll think about it. But of we have things to focus on right now. And he turns to uh, hop towards the end. He pauses, but if what y'all are saying is right, maybe there could be one or two of those folk amongst them that do need a place afterwards, after all this. If they and don't they take it, you think I could? <laughs> you don't see his face, but he's like, you know, you know, Sky. Uh, uh, why, why don't we? Why don't we? Why don't we sleep on that one? All right. Okay. You you got your whole life ahead of you. Got a whole world to see out there. This planet is just a desert. But it's homey. And 
Sunday's home week. And of course, after all this is over, y'all do have a place to come back here whenever y'all want. Maybe, you know, set up a little, I don't know, a little cottage or something. I heard that uh, retired ex-convicts often get into kombucha making, so oh, oh, what? Oh, 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 uh, what's a, a what? A retired ex-convict? I, I was No, no, what, what, what's, what's kombucha? <laughs> <laughs> it's tea that's gone bad, but you still drink it? Then why would you drink the tea if it's gone bad? I don't know. I just hear it's something people do. Technically, smog wine is just, you know. Oh, a what kind of wine? Grapes that have gone bad <clears throat> and have been polluted. Um, you know, th this sounds like a big old. This kind of sounds kind of a. Uh... Pretty fancy stuff. Like I'm more of a of a of a sarsaparilla drinker. I like oh. my bubbly sodas and my my fizzy water. Trust me, Sheriff. Smog wine is not a fancy thing. That's a lower deck saga delicacy. Hey, wait, does the smog wine have alcohol in it? Oh, does it? <laughs> Scott, how old? Scott, sure Scott, how old are you? Uh, <laughs> are you of legal age to be consuming alcohol? I'm old um, enough to know if there's alcohol in something. He gives, like, squints his eyes at her. It looks <laughs> way too cute that you cannot take him seriously. <laughs> According to our shipboard rules, which, of course, we all abide by, uh, so long as a parent or guardian witnesses any minor drinking and consents to it, it's all fine, and we've all consented. Mm -hmm. See. Oh, yeah. so everything's about board and legal. Speaking uh, of, I do want to. I I I don't like uh that we're still one crewmate semi down. Uh, so if you don't mind, uh, sheriff, I, I would like to try to find that. A uh, place you mentioned earlier, and see if we can't get Doctor Theriac up to full. Oh right, right. The, ir the irrigation farm. Right, right. Uh, right. Yeah. Uh, we'll get you all set up over there. Uh, he like points out towards where he, he points out to to one area of town where it's almost like you kind of like see a green patch amongst the the desert area. It's like it's like stands out a bit amongst all like the, the grays and the browns mm. like still and about in the air. Yeah. Just head on that direction, tell him I sent you. Will do, thank thank you. Um Okay. Um, um as the crew begin to like split off and do their different things. Uh I am gonna interest introduce just a very minor thing. So uh we have six Seven will count for E since it is the start of the day and you got threatened at the end of the night. Um, this stuff is purely how you're preparing for the battle. We're going to each be able to just have like little scenes of, of talking and, and able to, uh, um, you know, a, a, able to have scenes of you creating this as much as people want. Or you can just say, I do this with my time. Uh, however, comma, I have a few things. So um, you can... Everyone can pick, like, their own individual thing that they want to do for the week. If it's, like, a big task, it's going to have to be, like, more than 50% of the crew are going to be joining you in doing this. These are things, like, on your own, you can just have a big rest because there's going to be uh, six sleeps until the big showdown happens. So everyone is going to take six long rests. But if you're, like, a little tired, you can just spend a whole day resting, which, uh, and then you can take a, another long rest on top of that. Um... You can teach, you can spend a few days teaching residents fight better fighting techniques. Uh, so they will be able to help you out in fights a little more. There's going to be a, a little mechanic when we get to the fight of at the top of the round, everyone is going to be able to decide on what they think generic town residents will do. And they won't be in the fight, but you can like pick areas of the map and be like, I want them to open fire here. Or if you want to like, for example, go and collect a bunch of like oil you can be like i want to 
cover the front of the uh, of the inn with like oil barrels that you can ask the townspeople to drop. That'll also take a few days. Building a healing station, which you'll all be able to pick like healing points. Uh, just in case things get a little bit too dicey, which will take a couple days. Uh, going to the merchant, uh, there's going to be... You could all go meet the traveling merchant and go to the shop that they're going to be running. Uh, I've sent, I have sent you all uh, the list of things that you can buy. That'll take a full day to do stuff. Um, building extra defenses will take one day if you want to build extremely, like, way more elaborate things. Um... For example, it's like you want to build the uh, the walls of the uh, of the inn out, so it's like there's full barred doors that you can shoot through. Maybe that'll take a little longer of time. I'm gonna be uh, posting in our little chat a just like a list of possibilities and how long things will take. If you have anything that you'd like to suggest that uh, your character does over the next week um you can pick more than one for example uh if you wanted to get barrels for oil and uh, like attach them to the front of the saloon or whichever area you decide to defend that'll take three days um you can then go to the traveling merchant for a day and then spend the other uh two days just um like teaching the residents how to fight with other people um just in a way to like how are you preparing the town to fight how are you preparing yourself to fight if you wanted you could be like my character just fully rests for a full week doesn't do anything more i want to just go to full max and have all of my shit like prepared and, and on lock uh you can also do that um maybe have a look around that or if you have something that you're like particularly like oh that immediately i want to do i want to spend my whole week teaching residents how to fight better um go for that however whilst that's going on oh hello i heard someone open their mouth for a comment i was just gonna say hi gang it's momo am i doing an infiltration because i imagine that would take sky that will take the I, full I week was, yeah, yeah i was gonna ask the same if um it kind of like double up because poncho wants to take sky and azan to see cletus so they could uh, get whatever mm -hmm. weapons they need because mm -hmm. um, definitely feels like they could talk to them better than he could to get like any kind of deals but and also since it's in that route towards the main city area then Sky can often do their infiltration afterwards what do we have time? Yeah, well, we have time. Also, it, it, it will take a, a day to do that it will take a day to go to the traveling merchant and back um so i mean you would be able to do that and then we could have a uh we could try and have a scene trying to figure out if sky can infiltrate the gang if that was the idea that everyone wanted to go for if we wanted to I go pure defense a, put all defenses in i mean yeah, a weapon as a peace offering oh yeah yeah I, I am cool with that idea uh like starting off with a small scene just like going shopping and then having the final decision be made by sky because if she really wants to do it i don't think either of us are going to stop her is the thing yeah Right, and that being what she does for the rest of the week, uh, if that's the plan, I'm down and okay with it. I, I feel like don't. Yep. after that scene, Sky is very invested in the idea that these hoodlums could have a redemption arc. So I think that she would be very down to try and do a little infiltration. Cool, awesome. I love that. Um, uh, Andre, let me know how you feel about this. My thought for Ig is to, provided we have time to do both, is that we could try to, like, work on getting Theriac, like, up to, like, you know, uh, uh, full functioning capacity and then maybe we work together on either building a healing station or building extra defenses yeah that sounds good. Well, uh, theory it's going to be at full like stamina and health by next session the, like the whole regrowing thing is just flavor it's not mechanical at all but yeah <laughs> i think that's okay 
so so which do, do you have like a pr uh, preference for what we we focus on together the healing station or the defenses um i think having a uh I think having a healing station would be best. So that mm -hmm. way, based on what we're saying, it doesn't seem like we have a ton of people uh, yeah. to just, like, overwhelm them. So I think having a station so that we can send people out in rounds and then having them come back if they need healing would be best. Yeah. There's also, like, cool. these aren't these things aren't, like, the only options. If you think of something that you think would be interesting, these are just things that I just randomly grabbed. But if you have things you're like, actually, I would like to... I would like to make it seem like there's way more people. Maybe try to set up some fun, some like type of automated, very shitty turrets that look softly in the window that aren't that useful, but can seem like there's like 30, 40 people here. Well, like I, I, I feel like I already know what I would like to do during the battle, but I kind of am hoping that me casing the electricity of the town helped me with that already. Perfect. So this is like this is what I think would be more helpful. But I, I think I think I think especially, uh, yeah, I think a healing station would be good. I, um, because of what what um, Pancho said, my temptation is to try and like de-rank the saloon as much as possible so it's less of a good target to have a shootout at and uprank city hall so i can funnel more people to it and kind of like block off roads and such to try sure. and get people to face us at city hall uh just in case especially because if no one cares if that place blows up and also it would be great if at the end the big mayor speech is done in front of the ruins of city hall <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. i love me an ulterior motive so my plan is to infiltrate the gang and be like, I need money, my ship crashed, you can pay me so I can fix my ship and get off this dust bowl. The, the town is clearing out the mines and they're keeping it all in the old city hall to try and trick you guys. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, well, that makes sense, yeah. Try, trying to ship it out before yeah. like, they can get the And that way we can... Um, we can um build extra defenses around those walls to keep them up, and we can maybe do some trap rigging, barrel rigging. Sure. Um, Poncho will pull, will definitely let Sky, let Sky know that if she's really trying to sell it, to show off that bandana. Because that bandana belonged to Sammy. Mm. So and no one else would have that bandana unless they talked to Poncho. So you could show that as proof that I was there. Would you be interested in perhaps role playing that out later? Yes. I I kind of want to give you my flame rifle too. Just so you look even yeah. badass. <laughs> <laughs> to me? Yeah, yeah. Like okay. At the traveling merch. In role playing that out later. I think that's it. At the traveling <laughs> merch, we're gonna be like, "Do you really want to do this? Do you really want to do this? Okay, here, your dads, I guess, are gonna arm you up and get you ready." <laughs> I tell you what, I'm actually, I'm. So, I'm liking mm. everyone having like these scenes that they're planning on doing that they want to do, and I did fully intend to have like the seven days go by and then the session will end with the showdown. However, if we would like to, we can have everyone like deciding, okay, this is what we're going to do. This is where we're going to go. This is our general plan because there's a bit of splitting of the party. Like Sky's going off to do her own thing. Everyone's trusting that and, and that will turn into a whole thing and uh, there'll be like the shopkeep and then Theorek and I, we could have everyone have this conversation and then decide, okay, this is what we're going to do. And then we could pick up 
and with I think the people are interested. doing those scenes a, and yeah. then the fight. Yeah, because I think these because yeah. these scenes are going to be really awesome. They're going to be really good, and they're yeah. also going to take some time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, I'm good with that. Yeah, I yeah. agree. I'm with that. Yeah, totally. Perfect. Yeah. So, everyone, you you had this whole conversation in the middle of town, looking at the the old uh, this old town that has not that's had more love than it could imagine but it not enough like resources not enough things and and the people in the town have show it su- this such dedication that they are willing to stand here even at the end even when the town has no more love to give them they are flooding it with it you will decide this is the plan it's risky and it is so incredibly dangerous a misstep will result in 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 more bloodshed than you're interested in but in the morning as you all finish talking and then you go off and you kind of prepare yourself for the next day you all meet at the edge of town you have lizards that are going to take you these different places and ideas and hopes of what's going to be happening over the next week. Is there anything that the two groups who are leaving because Azam, Sky, Poncho are going off to the merchant, Eigen Theriac, uh, Eigen Theriac, Flair, Keelan and Scrap are all staying in town. Is there anything you'd like to say to each other before you leave? Um, Poncho is on the back of Thistlebrush petting the lizard. Uh, y'all two rode, uh, rode lizard before. Riding a bike. Can't be that much different, right? I've ridden a bird. Oh, then y- y'all two will be fine. All right. We're leaving the town and y'all care of over there. Doctor, Ag, y'all we'll- take good care of the place. Yes, we'll be all right. Uh, Sky, um, we'll... We'll we'll be here when you get back. I'll get back. Okay. Good. Scrap. Um. Walks up to you. And. Kind of takes your hand and then puts in it. A. Just a small. Quite large round silver ball. I couldn't save much of the pinball machine. That's about the only thing that's... that's kept. You... fucking come back. Alright? Because we're gonna rebuild that together. That ship... points toward the... corroding girder of nothing. Scrap. That ship needs you to rebuild. Why is everyone talking like this is my funeral? Y'all are being bombers. Hey, Come if on, it's... Come dudes, have a little confidence in me. Jeez. If it's any consolation, I don't care if you come back ever at all. So, uh-huh. I hope you die out there. Oh, uh, thanks. <laughs> You know what? I hope I die too. That <laughs> fun. It, it seems like a great time to mention that there's a raccoon sticking its claws in my back. And oh, guy! Goes. Hey, I'm just a little guy. Oh well, yeah. Um. Uh, Do you want to take that with you? We we Probably can. Shouldn't. We can. We can. Uh, we're going to be just resting for a bit till Doctor Theriax back on their feet. So. We could hang on to Guy for a bit. Yeah, but you're taking care of Theriac. Uh... (laughs) Flair? Yeah. Seeing as how you are the least talented of the group and will therefore have the shortest to-do list, 
please take my raccoon. Thank you. I will make sure the raccoon loves me more than you when you get back. <laughs> you know what? That's a fair challenge. I'm, I'm just a little guy. Hey, you're more than just a little guy. You're my big guy. Yeah, I'm just a little guy. It's already working. I'll be careful if I were you. He, he bites when your mouth is open. Mm. <laughs> All right, then. Sky is on. Let's ride. And he, clack, he whips the stirrups and Thistlepurse takes off into the desert. Yeehaw! And with the Let's Ride echoing through the streets of Neutrino Downs, we're going to end our session there. Because I could not, I could not, I, I will never be able to beat a Let's Ride. That shit is the sickest thing in the fucking world. Uh, oh, ride. my day is yeah, the fucking let's coolest ride. thing in the universe. Let's ride. Love it. They, uh, oh, I promised you that I would do it and I delivered. Honestly, I'm so stoked. Literally, genuinely, I, w I was like, oh, man, I'm feeling, I'm feeling, I'm like lagging a little bit. You said let's ride. I'm so juiced right now. I'm so. I know. <laughs> it juiced me up a little bit. Uh. Well, beautiful people, thank you so much for joining us here today. Um, let's do a quick little social social roundabout, and uh, and then we'll say our goodbyes to uh, Neutrino Downs and possibly Sky. Maybe Sky will die. Who knows? I don't know why I'm so focused on that. Um, I'll go first. Hello, beautiful one of people. Hi, how's it all going? Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Matt, Captain Krell, and all things. Um, if you like this episode and you're like, ah, oh, I wonder what this is like with music and sound effects all in the background, then next week, uh, if you look on any form of podcast app and type in The Atomist, we'll be releasing the podcast episode where we take this recording and we take all the mechanics talk and we add sound effects and music and all that beautiful stuff. There is every other episode, every previous 21 episodes will all be uploaded to your favorite uh, your favorite podcasting app, as well as the miniseries, that corrects mm -hmm. Dylan, am I lying, as well as the miniseries will also be in podcast form. Um, I'll do a little round robin, we'll go opposite ways. Wally, would you like to do a little social, socials, buddy? Yeah, so it's me, Wally. You can find me on the Twitter at W A L L E one three two, like the cute little Disney robot talking about my usual hyperfixations. This week, my hyperfixation is because the spoilers dropped for the next One Piece chapter. I'm kind of really focused on that because, gosh, I love One Piece a lot. That's my main <laughs> hyper focus is One Piece. Ask me about One Piece, and I will talk <gasps> about it for hours. That's so fun. The other day of recording, you tweeted. Uh, it was like a. It was like a meme of like. How would you let people know that you're in danger? You're allowed to send one tweet, and yours was like one piece is mid. And I was scrolling down, and I didn't have the whole tweet up. I just had it was Wally, and it said one piece is mid, and I was like, that doesn't sound like Wally at all. And then I scroll, <laughs> it's like it worked fully. I was like, I wonder what's happening. And then I found out that it was a meme. So yeah. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> just me talking about One Piece a lot. Uh, um, but funny. yeah, that's where you can find me. You can also find me on GGK Game Nights every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday mornings playing some TTRPGs. It's a lot of fun. Every Monday I'm playing a Dragon Ace RPG. We just got into a big old heist. Oh, wow. And yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's it's a it's a great show. Um, check it out. It's a lot of fun. Monday evenings, Thursday evenings playing some Monster of the Week. And Saturday mornings playing some Dungeons and Dragons. It's grand time, so check me out there. And also just follow me on Twitter because that's where also I'm talking about the other great stuff that I'm doing. Which is stuff that I really can't <laughs> talk about yet because we haven't made announcements about them yet. But uh, <laughs> maybe another podcast I'm going to be on. Who knows? <gasps> Beautiful, wonderful. Yeah, that's uh, where you can find me. Perfect. Uh, Andre Rivera Art, would you like to do a little social crawl? That's my handle. <laughs> Uh, you can also find me at algebra.art. which has my portfolio and all my actual play stuff on it, including Atomus and Tragedy and Unicorn Hunt and Redline and Power Rangers and now Streets of Gotham, because Batman is my current hyperfixation right now. Beautiful. Perfect. Uh, beautiful, wonderful Momo O'Brien. I'm Momo O'Brien. You can find me everywhere at Momo underscore O'Brien. I make content about immersive experiences, and my current hyperfixation is Valheim. Hmm. You say current hyperfixation like we don't go through this every few months. 
Yeah. Yeah, I current. guess. I yeah, mean, current I'm is true. Yeah, there's something. nothing wrong. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Uh, perfect. Uh, not even Lee Kadir. Werewolf Fields, go. Yes. Uh, hi, my name is Nordine Likadir, also known as Werewolf Fields, all over the interwebs, literally anywhere you look for them. It is indeed me, even if I don't seem very active on it. Sometimes I just reserve the URL. Uh, <laughs> I am a tabletop consultant, designer, writer, and performer. Uh, as for what I'm doing currently, not very exciting things, I promise. I'm here, that's the most exciting thing I'm doing, and then there's about a bunch of stuff that I can't really talk about right now. But when I get to you, <laughs> you'll be the first to know. Also, uh, Dylan and I are currently in a World of the Apocalypse series called Atlanta by Moonlight, if you want to check that out. I think the whole series should be out by this point, but the time whole series? is a strange thing. The whole series will be out at the airing of this episode and the uh, the main series of Vampire that is uh, uh, Atlanta by Night will be just about to start. Yeah. So you Ooh. should watch our Werewolf short series and then see the main cast go through Vampire after that. It's going to be a great time. We had mm -hmm. Dylan and I had a great time along with the rest of the cast, and we hope that you enjoy him mm -hmm. and those characters, too. Mm -hmm. That's it for me. Uh, my current hyperfixation is honestly being overwhelmed with all of the hyperfixations I currently possess. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> uh, wonderful, Super Dylan. Hello. Uh, I'm Super Dylan, uh, and I write tabletop RPGs and I am an AP performer as you see here as you may have seen on arc 11 of unprepared casters uh, which is completed um, and uh, again on werewolf uh, the apocalypse Atlanta by moonlight um, and my current type of fixation is uh uh, wildflowers. Um, what a beautiful hyperfixation. I want to say fuck that game, but oh, I can't stop. I thought, you meant, I thought you meant wildflowers as in the flower. No. Wildflowers. A fucking, it's another cozy game. I'm fucking cozy gaming like so hard that it's no longer cozy. Would you say that cozy all. games are your hyperfixation? Yes, I, I nice. cannot stop and I don't even really like this one that much. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm <am> not <laughs> I cannot stop it. It it's sounds like, like it's it sounds it's, like you're being covered in a blanket, but it's made of itchy wool. Yeah, I'm being like, <laughs> like I'm being restrained by a blanket. Like I'm like, <laughs> he's like, be cozy, and I cannot <laughs> stop it. It's really yeah, beautiful. But Perfect. that's it. <laughs> uh, well, gang, thank you all so much. Uh, I hope you see us next time. And the next time we fly through the Atlas Sea, I hope you will be there to fly with us. Thank you so much. <gasps> 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 <gasps>